كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رأيكم. We are all, as a parent, we are responsible in the day of the judgment in front of Allah for your children and your family as being a breadwinner. Allah will ask you, you cannot save yourself and go to the Jannah without saving your family. There is no discussion about that. So how the parent you can raise your children in this kind of society while your children is surrounded by negative influences all around the children. Not just the negative influences, but there's also a lot of undesirable influences around you or negative forces that come against you. We know the media, which is mean the Western media, play a big role in shaping the identity of our children, which is identity has nothing to do with the Islam. So how, what can we do to preserve the Islamic identity in these kind of influences? So we know the problem and we know the challenge that's facing us. It's a monumental challenge. There is no debate about that. As they say in English, it will take the entire village to raise one children. So we do know it's a task goes beyond the parent only or the teachers. It will take the whole village to raise one children. So what can we do now as a parent? I will discuss seven things that a parent we can do to help preserve the Islamic identity. So before we even go to the children, the parent, the biggest weapon that a Muslim can have, it's the dua, supplication. So we have to make the dua for our children, not after they was born, because when the children is born, we do make the dua for the children. And we should make the dua before we even sleep with our peers. And the dua, you should say, O oh Allah, prevent me and my family from shaitan and regime. And whatever we have produced, prevent that person from shaitan or regime. That's what every parent should say, first of all, so Allah can protect, can protect whatever you produce from shaitan and regime. So that's what the parent I mean, should do before they even sleep together. After you having the children, what else you know, can, can you do? You have to lead by examples. We do know that the children learn by the examples. You have to set a right example in front of the children. You do the right thing. You do your prayers. You perform your Islamic duty. And as we know, the Islam is not only about the prayers and doing the fasting or giving the zakat or going perform the hajj. Islam, it's the way of the life. Do not confuse your children. In the masjid, you show them you know, one side of the Islam. And when you leave the masjid, when you go to the children's school, there's a business as usual. So usually, I mean, the children get confused you know, by that. So you have to always set a consistent Islamic example whether you are with the children at home, in a mosque, on the street, on the school, always be proud who you are. Because the children can pick that up if you show them a different faces from a different time or in front of the different people. Islam, it's a complete religion. We have everything in Islam. How to deal with your children, how to deal with your wife, how to deal with your neighbors, how to talk, how to do your business. So we have to teach our children about that. But how you as a parent, you can teach your children about Islamic identity, and you as a parent, you don't even know the basic fundamental of the Islam. So there is a big responsibility, you know, lies in the hand of the parent. You have to learn your Islam to be a good Muslim in order to set a good example for the children. So the obligation, you know, comes from the parent, you know, first. You all have the obligation. 
as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith, talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslima. There is no excuse about that. Whether you are young, old, whatever. So we can attain the Islamic learning from the day you was born till the day you go to the qabr, which is the coffin. So that's your obligation. Leading by examples, how could you expect I mean, your child to grow with a good moral character and while you are sending a wrong signal to your children? For example, someone you know, called you at home and you must be busy doing something else. Then you tell your children, tell so-and-so I'm not here. So what you're doing indirectly, you're teaching your children to lie, it's okay, or it's fine. Which is wrong, because the parent, they are the first teacher of the children first, before they even go to school. Number three, we have to lay the foundation, the ground. We have to mold the children from when they was young. Don't wait till when they're a teenager and you run after them. So how can you mold the children while they're still young, and they are still teachable like a sponge. From the early age, it's imperative that you have to plant the Islamic value in the soul of the children as the way of their life. You have to show them that we as a Muslim, we have our value, which is different than the Western society no value. And for example, we have our holidays, which is the Islamic holidays. So you have to teach your children, well, we have our own holiday, which is different than the non-Muslim holidays. We have to teach our children how to dress. We are Muslim, we have our apparel of the dressing. As a Muslim, we have to show our children how to conduct with your peers how to walk, like our brothers say in the Quran. How do you walk? How do you talk with your peer or with your eld elders? So we have to teach them you know, about all of those and show them what's the value of the Islamic. And we have to bring our children. Uh, we need all of the girls, our daughters, to come forward because this is about you the boys and the girls, because you are the future of the Islam. This is not about the oldest people. This is about you. It's not about us. So we want all of you to listen, I mean, carefully what we are saying. So you have to listen attentively. That's the reason why, you know, we're here. By laying the foundation, you have to bring your children to the Islamic environment, like a masjid, like what we're doing, you know, now. So they understand how the Muslim women I mean, perform their prayers and how they conduct themselves while they are in a mosque. You have to bring them to the muhadara so they can see the other you know, Muslim you know, children, so they can interact you know, with them. All of those will have like, I mean, a positive you know, influence for our children. And from a time to time, we have to tell our children a story. And when you're telling them the story, tell them the story about prophet and the sahaba so they can relate how those people have conducted them in their life so they can understand and memorize automatically how prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sahaba they was conducting in the different scenario and how was their life so they can be so interesting about those kind of you know, life but if you don't tell them your children about the sahaba life so how they will know how those sahaba are conducting themselves in the Islamic you know, environment. And in our house, we have to put them in the Quran, which is the Tilawat, you know, Quran, which is the Tilawat, you know, Quran. So those things can be naturally planted into the head, into the head. And you do the prayers, you know, with them. So the worshiping can be naturally, you know, for them.